Okay, so how to divide square roots. So uh, the question is, the square root of 10 divided by the square root of 50. So what I'm looking for you not to do is to get your calculator and plug in a bunch of numbers, take the square root of 10 divided by the square root of 50 and get some sort of decimal value. Uh, now, of course, you know, you somewhat could easily interpret this question as this, but in fact, uh, what we're gonna do here is put the calculator aside and we need to be able to uh, do this without the aid of a calculator, especially if you're any sort of algebra student. Okay, you gotta be able to work with square roots and radicals. So we're gonna be focusing in on the properties of square roots and radicals and how to simplify something like this. Okay, so if you're in any sort of algebra course, uh, you should be able to do this. If you remember how to do this, go ahead and uh, fully simplify 10 divided by the square root of 50, and we'll see how you uh, have done with this particular problem in just a second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades, and I really like to think of myself as someone who explains math in a super clear and understandable way so anyone and everyone can learn this stuff. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level in terms of mathematics, I can definitely help you out. Now, if you are preparing for any sort of test that has a math section on it, and if you have any intentions of going to college, or if you're in college, you're going to be taking tests like the Accuplace or Alex exam, SAT, ACT, or if you're going back to graduate school, GRE, GMAT, or maybe if you're going to become a teacher, teacher certification uh, exam, or going into the military, ASVAB exam, or a GED exam. There's a ton of tests out there that people have to take that have a math section on it. I can help you prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, well, my homeschool courses were just voted number one for middle and high school mathematics, so you definitely got to check out uh, by the way, by, that was done by a major homeschool publication. So check out my homeschool math courses. I think you'll be very happy with uh, what you see. And if you need some math notes to study from, I'm going to leave uh, links to my math notes in the description of this video. Okay, so we're going to put away the calculator for this particular question and just use our algebra skills and math skills to deal with this. So let's get going. And again, if you know how to do this problem, put your answer into the comment section. But uh, first thing is, we want to just rewrite this differently. So we have 10 divided by the or square root of 10 divided by the square root of 50. Let's write it this way, the square root of 10 divided by the square root of 50. So we're going to kind of put this into a fraction form. So you need to understand that you can always write a fraction like this, or you can write a division problem like this. They're the same thing. This is, let's just go ahead and read this, the square root of 10, this fraction bar, means divided by the square root of 50. So this is the first step, is to go from here to here, all right? Now, at this uh, point in the problem, if you're um, saying, oh, wow, okay, square root of 10 over the square root of 50 in terms of a fraction, now I know what to do here. Well, if you know what to do, then, you know, pause the video and, and go forward with this problem. But uh, we're going to go ahead and start working with this right now. Okay, so we can simplify this because this is not fully simplified. All right, so let's go ahead. You can see I already pre um, uh, did all the work here. So again, square root of 10 divided by the square root of 50. We can write it as the square root of 10 uh, over the square root of 50. Now, here is a beautiful little property that you learn in algebra when we deal with uh, square roots and radicals. This little symbol right here is what we call a radical. Now, these little radicals with no number in front of it um, is square roots. But if I put a little three right there, we're talking about a cube root. Technically, a square root has a little two there. But uh, this symbol here is a radical symbol. So, you know, they're kind of one in the same radical, square root, etc. All right, so there is a um, property, okay, and I'm going to explain this, what's going on right here, that says this, the square root of A over the square root of B, as long as the numerator and denominator are the exact same uh, roots. In other words, if it's a square root or a, uh, and a square root or a cube root and a cube root, um, you can do this. You can write the two individual square roots or, uh, or you can write one big square root like this, A over B. Okay, so you can go this way or you can go this way, right? So this is a property of square roots uh, and uh, radicals that you study thoroughly. And there's additional ones to this, but we're only going to focus on division in this particular uh, problem. So what I'm going to do is I want to write the square root of 10 over the square root of 50 like so, okay? Now, what's the advantage of doing it, uh, writing it this way, this one big square root over 10 over 50? 
Well, let's go ahead and take a look at that now. Here I have the square root of 10 over 50. So right here, I'm like, wow, I can reduce this fraction, right? So hopefully all of you uh, can see that we can reduce 10 over 50 to 1 fifth. All right, let's just quickly make sure no one's lost on that. Let me write it this way right here. Uh, 10 over 50. Again, if you don't know how to reduce fractions, then you really need to work on your uh, uh, fraction knowledge. Of course, I have tons of videos on all this stuff, but you're just uh, breaking these up in factors. So 50 is 5 times 10. 10 is 1 times 10, and we could cross cancel uh, like factors uh, over the fraction here. So we're left with 1 fifth. Okay, so here we have the square root of 1 fifth. And uh, for a lot of you out there, if you gave me the answer to the square root of 1 fifth, I would say pretty good, okay? I would probably give you even full credit on a test or quiz, but I'd also really want you to take it to a, um, uh, a bigger level than this. Some teachers out there may not accept this, but if you got to this point, that's very good, but it's not as good as doing what we're gonna do uh, right now, okay? All right, so, uh, so we broke it, uh, ten, square root of 10 divided by square root of 50. We got uh, the square root of uh, 1 fifth, but what we want to do is to use this uh, principle that I just was talking about here in a second. Let me write it back up here again. So the square root of A over the square root of B is equal to the square root of A over B. So here I'm going to go from one big square root and I'm going to uh, break up that uh, fraction here in, uh, by putting the numerator and denominator into the own little respective square roots. So in other words, I'm going to write the square root of 1 fifth as the square root of 1 over the square root of 5. Okay, basically I'm just going or using this uh, principle. I can go both ways with this, okay? All right, now when I do that, let's take a look at what happens uh, to the numerator, the square root of 1. We're only talking about the principal square root. That's just the positive square root. So the square root of 1 is 1. Okay, so when we're talking about fully simplifying uh, with square roots and radicals, you want to go as far as you possibly can go. And uh, the square root of 5 is just the square root of 5, okay? So we can't do anything with that. But now we have a bit of a problem here, okay? So what is the problem? Well, when you're working with fractions, you cannot have a square root in the denominator, okay? An irrational number. In other words, a square root, like the square root of 5, uh, square root of 4, would, of course, would be like 2, okay? So that's not an irrational number. Uh, the square root of 5 is an irrational number, so you can't have that in the, uh, the denominator because we're dividing by something that's irrational. It doesn't make sense, right? So, for example, um, the square root of 5 is a decimal, okay? This decimal value goes on and on and on. It doesn't repeat, and it doesn't end, all right? So we don't really know the full value of this decimal. So if I said, hey, let's divide up our pizza, uh, in uh, square root of five uh, slices. Well, if this number never ends, this doesn't make sense. Okay, dividing by an irrational number. We can't divide things up by a number that never stops and never um, uh, repeats itself, right? So we, we can't do this, right? So in algebra, you don't want to leave. Uh, matter of fact, most teachers are going to um, definitely take points away if you left your um, irrational number, a radical, down here in the denominator. So we have to fix that, and we can do that uh, through a process called rationalizing, okay? So how do I fix that? Well, all we're gonna do is just take this number, and we're gonna multiply both the numerator and denominator by this number. So here we have the square root of five, so I wanna multiply uh, the bottom, uh, or the denominator by the square root of five, and the numerator by the square root of five. Now, if you look here, the square root of five, uh, over, or the square root of five divided by the square root of five is what? Any number divided by itself is 1. So we're really just taking this number, 1 over the square root of 5, and multiplying by 1. And any number multiplied by 1 is just itself. Okay, so it's an identity. So we're not changing anything here. So some of you might be nervous here, like, all right, we're breaking the problem, we're changing it. No, we're not. We're just multiplying, or we're just multiplying this here by a fancy-looking 1. But this is going to have a lot of benefits uh, to us when we do this. All right, so... Here we have 1 times the square root of 5, which, of course, is the square root of 5. Square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is the square root of 25. So the way you do that, when we square, uh, multiply numbers, okay, it's, it's pretty um, similar to the division property. 
we could just have one big square root and we multiply the factors. So we have the square root of 5 times 5, which is, of course, the square root of 25. All right, now here, now, the square root of 25 is going to be pretty uh, awesome because we know that. We could just take the principal square root, which is 5. And finally, 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 we have our denominator uh, as just a regular integer whole number uh, value right there. It's not an irrational number. Uh, we're totally fine with uh, square roots and radicals in the numerator. It's the denominator you have to worry about. So this would be the best version of this problem. Okay, the square root of 10 divided by the square root of 50. This right here in my class, matter of fact, I would give you an A plus 100%. And um, I would also... Uh, you know, I would give you a coupon to uh, any barber that does a flat top, especially the ones back in 1985, which is so awesome. Matter of fact, I would just say, you know what, you can take the rest of the year off. You uh, are pretty awesome. You apparently uh, know a lot of algebra. I don't know what you're doing. Maybe you're watching that guy on YouTube, but that's pretty awesome. This would be the best version of that, uh, of this particular problem. Okay. So again, although this version is pretty good, this is by far the best because you're showing your teacher you know how to work with these principles, you know how to rationalize, et cetera, et cetera. And believe me when I tell you, if you leave any answer with the square root in the denominator, for sure you're, going, you're not going to um, uh, get full credit. Uh, and more importantly, if you're taking some sort of multiple choice uh, uh, test and you're like, you're, you did everything right, but you don't recognize your answer, you're, you're like looking for the one over the square root of five, you don't see it, okay? You see this right here, but you won't recognize that your answer, you know, this is, you know, you're not finished, okay? And you have to select this answer, all right? So you've got to rationalize. It's not an optional thing when it comes to working with square roots. So anyways, lots to learn uh, in terms of properties of square roots and radicals. And this is, you know, essential uh, for you to do well in algebra. Okay, so um, one thing I want to leave you with is, it's uh, don't confuse you watching me doing math as you're going to get better in mathematics, right? It's no different than uh, practicing, say, basketball, all right? Would you watch TV all day long of some great basketball player making basketball shots? Now, that's not going to improve your skill, okay? Now, you're not going to get any better by watching someone else, uh, you know, play basketball, all right? Also, if you just go out and shoot one hoop and you happen to get it right or happen to get it in, that doesn't mean that you're going to get every single shot after that, you know, the next 100 shots in. So you have to practice this and you have to practice a lot. So make sure you follow through, you know, and take this um, little mini lesson to the next level. All right, but if this video did help you out in some small way, consider uh, helping me out in a large way by smashing that like button and maybe even uh, subscribing to my YouTube channel. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus math videos, basic math to advanced math like calculus and everything in between. So please take advantage of all my content if you like my teaching style, but my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.